back to Another day, another Amazon purchase. <laughs> Today is Saturday and I fully woke up with the intention of, well not woke up, I planned on not waking up and just like sleeping the whole day. Alas, my insomnia had other plans, so here we are. So after a very long break from Pinterest, I decided, and this was my first mistake, I decided to go on a Pinterest this week and for some reason, like it's the one app that always makes me buy things that I don't need. Pinterest somehow was able to convince me to buy seven different pairs of oven mitts, one for every day of the week. I don't even know how to bake. I haven't turned on that oven since I've been in this apartment. Actually, I think I exclusively only use my microwave and my air fryer. Anyways, I digress. The point I was trying to make is that Pinterest is dangerous. Last time I was on Pinterest was before I moved into my very first apartment. So when I went on Pinterest, it was just recommending a bunch of like apartment decor and like stuff that I was looking up before I moved here. And somehow I stumbled down the rabbit hole of cozy book nooks. This whole little area of Pinterest dedicated to book lovers who create little book nooks in their like house or apartment. to the topic of today's video. I, I'm, I'm gonna be making a book nook in my apartment because I, I looked at too many Pinterest photos and now I need one. Okay, so the essentials for a book nook based off of what I've seen off of Pinterest and kind of just like what I wanna do in like my own little space that I have here. Number one, you need a comfortable chair or at least like a cute chair, but for me, I don't want my chair to just be like aesthetically cute. I want it to actually be comfortable. Number two is optional, but I think it just makes the whole experience better. But almost everyone had like a little um, footstool to like prop your feet on when you're reading, which is just so cute. Actually, I think the Oxford Dictionary definition is, is Ottoman. I'm learning to adult and that means learning these words for different furniture pieces. Number three is a cozy blanket and also a pillow. Number four is cute little lights that you can hang. Number five, which is another thing that's optional, is one, you know, some place to put your books and then also some place to put like a nice little cup of coffee or something. Anyways, those are the ingredients for a book nook. Now I am just using what I have. If you guys have been here for a minute, then you know that I used to have this desk chair that looked like a clamshell. I got a new computer chair. That's the computer chair. That old chair, as beautiful as it was, I had to put it into my closet because I just couldn't, you know, I worked like 12 hours a day at a computer, so I need like back support. <laughs> Let me go get the chair so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Oh my god. Okay. So this is the chair. Or chair. I was actually going to sell it, but upon Pinteresting. <laughs> to actually use it in my little book nook that I'm gonna create over here. Number one is a chair. I have that, I dusted it off, I, I vacuum sucked it so it's nice and clean now. <laughs> Item number two is an ottoman. Now I bought an ottoman, this one I got for like $30 on Amazon and I'm really, really, really hoping that it's the same color as this chair. So item number three is a cozy blanket, which I do have. You guys may have seen this before. It's from my old apartment as well. I use it basically just like to sleep with. It's like my my favorite sleeping blanket. I'm trying to Pinterest on a budget. <laughs> this book pillow has one of my favorite quotes from A Court of Thorns and Roses and it says only you can decide what breaks you. Number four is like cute aesthetic lights. Now I have these cute aesthetic lights that I got at Target for a dollar in their little like dollar bin. These lights were actually strung under the bar of my old apartment and I literally, you guys, I had a pack of three of them. They were each a dollar um, and I'm so surprised they have lasted me this long. They still work. Wait, let me turn them on. Only thing is that they're battery operated which kind of sucks so I have to be careful you know when I turn them on I usually just turn them on for a few hours at night I have this picture of an elephant <laughs> I really want to put it somewhere in the book nook because it's just been sitting in my closet this is the corner that I'm going to be creating my book nook in perfect little spot that'll fit my chair and also hopefully the ottoman and maybe a few decorations while I'm doing all of this I'm going to update you guys on what I've been reading because I know it's been a minute I'm so sorry I've been working and I actually decided to go back to school so I've been doing online classes and it's just been crazy but I have been reading and I want to kind of talk about some of the books I'm reading it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun like just video we're doing we're doing all the things today. I didn't even mean to do this on purpose but I swear I'm just like 
like all all Pinterest today and I didn't even I didn't even plan it. Bob the builder. Let's go. Okay. Wow. This is a lot bigger than I anticipated. I'm not mad because I paid $30 and they they delivered like I swear this ottoman is as big as the chair. Oh my god. You guys, it's the same color as the chair. You know when you buy clothing off the internet and there's like a 50-50 chance it'll be what you want because you paid like $5 for it off of like Shein or something. A questionable purchase. It was very cheap and I was worried that it was gonna be like a doll house size, like a little, they were gonna like send me, an, you know. <gasps> yes, so beautiful. This is the same color, but that's the same color. Right? Mom? Is this the same color? <laughs> My mom isn't here, by the way. <laughs> I should FaceTime her and ask, but I think this is roughly the same color. While I am building this little ottoman thing, or just putting the lights on, I want to talk about the books that I have been reading, because I recently finished two books, and they were so good. I finished this book last night. It may be partially why I had such bad insomnia and why I'm up so early on a Saturday morning now. Skin of the Sea by Natasha Bowen. This is a new young adult. I believe it's the author's debut novel. I could be wrong. It doesn't say the month that this book came out, but it did come out like within, I'm pretty sure, like the last three months. Young adult fantasy novel inspired by a West African mythology. I was reading about this book. It said it was Children of Blood and Bone meets The Little Mermaid. I love Children of Blood and Bone, and I don't think I've read a mermaid book in a really, really long time, so I was super excited to pick this one up. I read this book in two nights, you guys, like two nights. It's only 300 and something pages. And let me tell you, it is 10 times better. It is like what The Little Mermaid wish wish she she could be you know does it sound right because this book is really really dark actually it's a, it's a pretty dark book it is young adult but i would say it's it does have a pretty sad premise in the story we follow our main character her name is simi and we don't know much about her past like her memory um when the book starts she really doesn't have much memory of her past she just kind of gets glimpses of it in the book simi is a how do you pronounce it a mom a mommy wata which is a mermaid our main character simi she almost died or no she did die but she was rescued by a deity turned her into a mermaid return for her life being saved she now is like her only job is to rescue lost souls so people who die at sea this book takes place in a fantasy world but it's in that time period when slave trade first started. Enslaved people were taken on ships um, across the ocean and a lot of them died on that journey and so her job is all those souls that were killed or thrown overboard, she has to collect their souls and bless them and um, kind of send them to the other side. It's really beautiful. I never heard of this sort of myth around mermaids before like it's really unique most books i've read mermaids are almost like sirens where they're really really bad or um they're kind of just you know fantastical creatures that you see on disney like ariel this is the first time that i heard the the myth or the legend of mermaids being kind of creatures that help rescue and bless souls. Right off the bat, I was super intrigued because I wanted to learn more about kind of this mythology of the mermaid. The whole premise of this book though is one day she ends up rescuing a boy. Now she is under very strict guidelines that she can only retrieve souls from dead bodies. She saves his life, which breaks one of the biggest rules of her kind. Now she has to go on this trip to find the creator or like the highest god of like all the gods in this world. Ask for forgiveness because she broke a rule and all all the lives of the other mermaids are at stake because the mermaid kind in this book just are kind of looked down upon. They're not something that other deities like or admire. Oh my god, it was phenomenal. Like,
yeah, I'm just gonna take the stuffing out of this thing and put it into here. While I'm down here, let us talk about Believe Me, my favorite series of all times, which I think I mention in every single video, Shatter Me by Tehede Mafi. Oh my God, why is this so hard? Shatter Me was only supposed to be three books. The third book came out, which was Ignite Me. When I finished the third book, Ignite Me, which again, was supposed to be the last book, falling like not like falling but like falling tears felt like the world was ending it was just such a visceral experience for me i could you not i like cried for three days and then i went back and read the book again and i cried again I would have thought someone had passed away in my family like that's how much of a reaction that book got out of me about a year and a half later to head of Buffy announced that she's going to continue the series and write three more books as you can imagine as a diehard fan like i was over the moon i was so excited that she was continuing the series but at the same time time I felt like I had my ending already. So what I mean by this is that last year I actually or actually was it earlier this year or last year I finished the last book of her series so book number six which was Imagine Me. A lot of people a lot of you guys were asking me like what my thoughts were because I had remained kind of quiet about it. People thought that I hated the book when it was like the total opposite. I absolutely loved it but when I finished that book it didn't feel finished to me. Weird feeling that like even though she made it very clear like this is going to be the last book there's going to be no other books after this like this is the ending she already had faked us out once with the third book and so i don't know i just i felt i didn't say anything but i felt like she wasn't done yet lo and behold i am so happy i trusted my gut feeling because we released believe me which is a novella that takes place it basically i don't even want to call it a novella because it's like another how many chapters is it it's another 150 pages that she could have added in to Imagine Me, which was the last book. It literally just feels like a continuation of Imagine Me. It picks up right where that book left off and we get another 150 pages. So good. Also, it's told from Warner's perspective, which is one of my favorite characters. And we really just got the the ending that I wanted in that book, but I felt like I didn't get. I do not believe you. I do not believe you. Anyways, being a diehard fan, I'm always happy um, when she writes more books, so it's not like a negative thing in any ways, but I feel like I totally predicted it because the reason why I didn't review that book was just because I felt like she wasn't done yet. I just have to say, I am so happy to be doing these kind of videos again. Like this feels like the videos I used to make a couple of years ago where we just kind of sit and chit chat and um, talk about books and like bookish stuff and I just, I love it. end of this project for the day i am so so happy with it it is not only cute but also a comfortable um book nook i really wanted something that was of course you know aesthetically pleasing but also really comfortable to sit in and i'm so happy that i got to um utilize this chair that has just been sitting in my closet forever i am very happy with the final product for the amount of space that i have the fact that i can fit a whole other chair and a uh, an ottoman i was gonna say footstool an ottoman and my little tbr car all in this corner and the lights and just everything Thank you for sticking around for the shenanigans until next time keep reading and i'll talk to you later bye